Welcome into Philadelphia 76ers Now. I'm Chase Sr., and no matter where you are or how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. So many content options out there. Anytime you choose us and decide to hang out with us, we certainly appreciate that. A lot to get to here on the show, as you can see with the rundown here to my right. We're going to take a look at a multitude of 76ers playoff clinching scenarios. DeAnthony Melton coming back last night. In that victory for Philadelphia coming off the back injury, thought he played pretty well, all things considered. We also have a new Robert Covington update. Let me just paint the picture for everybody. Picture this. A packed Wells Fargo Center. White out, blue out, red out. Whatever the Sixers decide to do, it's jumping in South Philadelphia. If you can't go to the game, you're at Xfinity Live or you're at the crib, you're on the edge of your seat watching some 76ers playoff basketball, riding the seesaw back and forth for some of these pressure-packed moments. Does that get you excited? If you're excited for the NBA playoffs, I want you to type me down in the comment section right now. Playoff hoops, it does not get better. All right. Sixers playoff clinching scenarios here. A lot to run through. We're going to simplify everything for you. Mathematically, get this, the 76ers can finish as high as the four seed. The most likely scenario, though, and the one that we're hopeful for, Philadelphia fighting for that six seed. If not, they'll be in the NBA play-in tournament, either the seventh seed or the eighth seed, a date with the Miami Heat, whether it be on the road or in South Philadelphia. Here is the current look at the NBA playoff picture right now on this Wednesday, April 10th, obviously with some games to go down tonight. Teams already in the playoffs. You have the Boston Celtics, Milwaukee Bucks, and they've already clinched those spots, right? And they're going to be sitting pretty most likely. Or could a wrench be thrown into the plans? Because as you can see, Boston Celtics have the number one seed locked up. It's crazy. They're 14 games ahead of the Milwaukee Bucks. But there you see Milwaukee Bucks at 48 and 31. The New York Knicks, 47 and 32. But unlike Milwaukee, they have not clinched a playoff spot. Orlando Magic, 46 and 33. Cleveland Cavaliers, also 46 and 33. The Pacers also have 46 wins, but also 34 losses. And then Philadelphia at 45 and 35. Miami Heat 44 and 35, Chicago Bulls 37 and 42, and the Atlanta Hawks set to get Trey Young back 36 and 43. So basically, outside of the number one seat, everything can change in the Eastern Conference playoffs. That's how closely contested everything is in the East. It could get crazy with only a couple of games left here for the regular season. 76 are scheduled. They only have two games remaining against the Orlando Magic this upcoming Friday. That could be a sneaky big game, honestly. You also want to measure how you fare against a team that you might have to play in the first round of the NBA playoffs. And then Philadelphia rounds out the regular season against the Brooklyn Nets on Sunday, April 14th. Chase, how could Philadelphia get the number six seed? I got you couple of scenarios, but we got you. Scenario number one, 76ers go 2-0. Pacers finish 0-2, and then the Heat lose one of three. The Pacers' remaining schedule, they also have two games left. On the road against the Cavaliers, Cavaliers jockeying for playoff positioning, and then they finish the regular season at home against the Atlanta Hawks. The Miami Heat here have three games left. They will play tonight against the Dallas Mavericks. Then they play on the 12th against the Toronto Raptors. And then again on Sunday against the Toronto Raptors. So Friday, Sunday against Toronto. Another way for Philadelphia to get the number six seed. This is scenario number two. 76ers go 2-0. and The Heat lose one of their final three. And then the Magic lose all of their last three games. That is a possibility here. It does hurt that Giannis is not going to play for Milwaukee. It has been deemed a calf strain officially by the team. 
No timeline for his return, but they averted disaster. It's not going to be a torn Achilles. But the Magic have the Bucks on Wednesday, Sixers on Friday, Bucks on Sunday. So the 76ers sandwiched between those two games against Milwaukee. Scenario number three. I told you we have you covered with every scenario. The 76ers go 2-0, and and both the Magic and the Cavs lose out. Doesn't matter in that instance what Indiana or Miami do. The Cavaliers schedule. It's a pretty cupcake schedule here outside of Indiana. You have the Grizzlies on Wednesday, Pacers on Friday, Hornets on Sunday. Two very winnable games, and the Pacers, obviously a solid team. Now, how could Philadelphia get the five seed? Here, more things have to happen with a couple of other teams in the mix. 76ers have to go 2-0. The Heat lose one of their last three. Magic lose their last three. And the Pacers lose their final two. How can the 76ers get the number four seed? Here, Philadelphia would have to go 2-0. The Heat lose one of their last three. Magic lose their last three. Pacers lose their last two. And the Cavaliers lose two of their last three. Now, of course, Philadelphia can also stay at seven. They could also drop to eight. But right now, they've won six games in a row. Hottest team in basketball, according to that winning streak being the longest in the NBA. How Philadelphia could stay at the seventh seed. Scenario number one, 76ers just went out. Indiana wins one of their last two. And Miami loses one of their last three. Scenario number two, 76ers win out. It's a great winning streak for the swagger and the confidence of this group going into the play-in tournament. And then Indiana loses out, and Miami wins out. There's an instance in which Philadelphia could drop to the eight seed. That is the last seed, the lowest seed that they could fall to because the Bulls, the Hawks, they're scrubs. Now, Philadelphia falls to eight if Indiana wins one of their last two, and then Miami wins out even if the 76ers went out. So a lot to unpack there, but that's why we did the work for you. With that, let's ask you this. This will be the pinned comment and today's poll question. Which seed will the 76ers finish as? Four, five, six, seven, or eight? Coming up next, we're only ramping it up, getting started here. DeAnthony Melton makes his return, hit his first three, and we have a new update on Robert Covington. Tyrese Maxey did not play last night against the Detroit Pistons, but he's been hooping 52-piece against San Antonio. A great game and a must-win spot against the Miami Heat. I think his stardom is only beginning because the trajectory for him is going to continue to be on the uptick. If you want to support him and you want to let everybody know that you love Mad Max, these Maxey shirts were $40.00. Now just $30, available in black and navy blue. All you have to do to get that deal, chatsports.com slash maxi, our friends at Fanatics, hooking it up. We'll put that link down below in the comment section and in the description of this video. DeAnthony Melton making his long-awaited return last night against Detroit. It was a good game to ease him in against the Detroit Pistons. He takes his first shot. He hits his first shot. After that, he struggled a little bit. Still think uh, Melton, all things considered, played solid hoop. You just wanted to see how he held up, how the back held up, and if the back held up at all. Finished with five points, so he only hit one more field goal outside of that first shot. Three rebounds, three assists. Nick Nurse giving him 16 minutes of runway there. Two of nine from the floor, one of five from three. You didn't expect much from DeAnthony Melton, but played well for this team. And Nick Nurse, here's what he had to say about the return of his two-way guard. He didn't shoot the ball well, but he took all the really good shots. You would expect that. He hasn't played in a long time. He came back from a couple of games, and if you take those two out, it's been a really long time, which it really has. I mean, basically hadn't played since January if you factor in those two games that he came back for in February, but the back flared up again. I think just movement-wise, Nurse continued. He looked good, and that's the main thing. I was kind of willing to keep him around 15 minutes tonight, and we got just about right there or so. I thought he had some steals. I thought he looked good. And while he didn't shoot well, I mean, it was just good to see DeAnthony Melton back on the court. 
And when I say he played well, he hits that first three. I liked how he was confident in taking that shot. I was just looking for him to move well. And I thought he did move pretty well on the floor for Philadelphia. Again, that two-way impact is going to be really important come playoff time. Latest on Robert Covington. According to Kate Scott, Sixers play-by-play -play announcer, taking over for Mark Zumoff, Rocco is hoping to come back within the next few games. It's funny. I feel like we've been having that next few games timeline in quotations for the last few months for Robert Covington. There's two games left in the season. So it's now or never for Robert Covington. We see him on the sideline and we see him on the bench rooting on his Sixers, being a good teammate. Look, I don't think he's going to come back. If he does come back, I don't think he's a part of this playoff rotation. You can't just throw him out there for the NBA playoffs and be like, yo, Rocco. Yo, Rocco, as people would say in Delco. Get out there, Rocco. Let's see what you can do. It's a long ways away from him being a process sixer. I mean, he's getting very, very close to being cooked and to being washed. A few shows ago, we told you we want to give some shout-outs to some subscribers here. We're going to do that. And how about this little profile picture from Terrell Harmon, if it's Terrell Harmon, Hopefully I got it right one of those two times, but Terrell or Terrell Harmon, 9701. He was the closest one to guessing the Sixers Piston score. And when you're rocking the Nike zip up, you got the arms like this, you got the fresh glasses, I rock glasses from time to time, with the beard that's manicured, you're swagged up and swagged out. And if you're still rocking with us, give us a real one here on the show. We certainly appreciate it. Everybody for always tuning in.